happy holidays. And thanks for watching this festive December update video. That intro is actually just for you, Jillian, by the way. As pretty typical for this type of year, November was certainly a very slow month. So today we're going to cover the typical metrics and then discuss what impact the lending industry may have on real estate next year. Okay, first up are the NODs or notice of defaults. As you can see on the screen right now, last month we only had 681 NODs compared to 849 in October. Like I've been saying all year, based on the amount of NODs we've seen, I wouldn't expect to see much foreclosure activity anytime next year. We tend to hover between 350 to 400 foreclosures on the market at any given time. I think we can expect to see much of the same for all of next year. Okay, next let's discuss inventory levels. Since April, we've seen our inventory swell almost every single week. The more inventory increases, the more it becomes a buyer's market. Well, the good news is this. Finally last month, the inventory went down. As you can see on the screen right now, in October, we ended the month with 8,198 homes on the market while last month we ended with only 8,087 homes. Put simply, our inventory went down 1.4%. Now, here's what's really interesting. Last year, we experienced pretty much the same trend as this year. In March of last year, we started with only about 3,000 homes for sale. Now, by the end of the year, we had more than doubled with 6,700 homes available. This year, we had almost 6,500 homes in April, and now we're at about 8,100. Now, the good news, however, is that inventory didn't start decreasing until December, while it started decreasing this year in November. Now, this is a great sign, and I'll explain why in just a bit. First, let's see what our inventory consists of. As you can see on the screen right now, out of 8,000 homes we have on the market, 13% are short sales, only 4% are foreclosures, and 83% are normal or traditional sales. For the most part, everything has been relatively consistent throughout this year. And I really don't expect these ratios to change much next year either. Okay, now let's talk about sales. Last month, we only sold 1,948 homes. That's the third worst sales month this year. The other two were January and February. We actually sold 2,282 homes in October. The reality is that sales generally decrease every month starting back in August. So it's not really much of a surprise that we sold less homes last month than we did in October. Now let's compare last month to next to last year though. While we were all surprised last year to see how sluggish sales were, we, were still sold, we still sold 2,121 homes last November. So compared to last year, we had a decrease of 8%. The funny thing is that our 8% decrease in sales is actually the best we performed all year. But then again, this time last year is when sales started plummeting. Now on the bright side, let's look at the median sales price. Last month, I reported that the median sales price in October was $197,000. I was very concerned that if we had two months in a row of declining median prices, it could trigger major concern. Well, the great news is that the median sales price this month went back up 1.5% to $200,000. That's still a little bit below where we were in September, but still great news overall. Okay, now before we wrap this up, I wanted to chat with you about the lending industry. Going into this year, we had a bunch of negative lending changes that really made it more difficult for buyers to obtain loans. Now, this included stricter guidelines and lower FHA limits. Well, it looks as though next year should introduce many new types of loans to lure back buyers. See, the lending industry is slowing down since refinances aren't as popular as they've been. If nothing changes, then potentially the lending industry will only do about two thirds of the business next year that they did this year. This year, the mortgage industry is set to lend about $1.4 trillion. If nothing is done, then next year will only be 900 billion. So to counter this decline, next year looks like the year of subprime mortgages again. 
According to lenders, there's potentially $600 billion in subprime lending to be had out there. I've spoken to several lenders that now have loan programs for buyers who literally are one day out of a short sale or a foreclosure. Also, we're seeing stated income loan programs again. Some lenders have already been doing 10% down jumbo loans. So the good news is that although our demand has obviously declined, this next year will potentially open doors to buyers that fundamentally don't exist today since they couldn't acquire financing. Okay, so let's go ahead and wrap up what we learned and figure out where we're going from here. Foreclosure activity is flat, which means that the relationship between traditional sales that are on the market and short sales or foreclosures is flat as well. Sales were down 8% from last year, but the median price just went up. So what does all this mean for us? Well, the good news is that since the median price came back up, I think we're much less likely to hear more talk about housing bubbles now. While some neighborhoods are still decreasing in value and will continue to, these are relatively isolated. I think it's fair to say that prices next year should remain pretty flat. Now this is great since it brings normality to a market that's been absurdly unstable for years now. I think part of the reason for our decline in inventory lately is because many potential sellers are quickly realizing that the market has changed and they aren't going to get the price that they were delusionally hoping for. Many sellers are pulling their homes off the market as a result, and many potential sellers simply don't see the point in even trying. But again, this is great for the overall market. Moving forward, conventional rules will start to apply again. Sellers will have to prep their homes to be marketed, buyers will have more time to make a solid decision, and price stability will create a calmer experience for both buyers and sellers. Now, if the next two months follow the previous year's trend, don't be surprised to see sales dip to 1,700 homes and potentially as low as 1,600 in February. This is a normal trend, and as long as the median price stands strong and inventory doesn't start swelling again, we should maintain stability here. If you're a seller, just make sure that you price your home accurately and make sure that your agent is legitimately marketing your home properly. Buyers are taking much longer now to make decisions, so how your home is marketed is more important now than ever before. If you're looking to buy, I feel pretty comfortable saying, go for it. Just make sure that your agent is knowledgeable about the area and ensure that the neighborhood you're looking in isn't one of the rare ones that is naturally adjusting downward in value. New home sales are getting crushed out there. And as a result, there's some pretty phenomenal deals that are starting to occur now. If you're considering buying new, just make sure that your agent educates you on the home values outside of that new home community, just to ensure that you're not overpaying too much for the privilege of buying new. Beyond that, thank you all for watching. Please click here to subscribe and have a happy holiday season.